Hey everybody, this is Everyday Commentary, and I'm going to do a video overview of this knife, the A.G. Russell Medium Barlow with Coca Bolo Handle Scales. Um, this is an overseas produced knife. Uh, you can see there it says, uh, let's see if I can get it to focus, uh, made in China, 8CR 13MOV. Um, and it is uh, a traditional style knife uh, called the Barlow. The Barlow originated in Sheffield, England, and it was designed as probably the first everyday carry folder knife. Um, this particular model has uh, the French cut at the top here instead of a nail nick. And the French cut has enough of an edge that it lets you open the knife with one hand. Um, one of the trademarks of the uh, Barlow form is this thing here, the extra long bolster. And the reason for the extra long bolster was that the original Barlows were made from really cheap materials. And so the bolster was actually a bolster. It bolstered the strength of the knife. Typically in uh, old manufacturing, the weakest part of a folding knife was the pivot. And so by putting this bolster on and making it extra long, they were able to strengthen the knife and use uh, cheaper materials, allowing more people to buy the knife because it was more affordable. Um, this has what uh, A.G. Russell calls his Zulu spear uh, blade type. It has a nice swedge in the top that uh, allows the knife uh, some uh, thin point for penetrating cuts. And the, thock, the stocks, uh, however, is still relatively thick. Um, it, it does have a, uh, a relatively shallow hollow grind, and the secondary bevel is, uh, the cutting bevel is quite nice. You can see here that there's a little bit of a ricasso so that you can sharpen the knife all the way to the edge. And you can also see that it has the other trademark of the Barlow form, which is the uh, teardrop shaped handle. It's a really comfortable knife in the hand. It's not, it doesn't afford a whole lot of grip. This is not like a, a tactical knife or a hard use knife. But for an EDC knife, it does give you plenty of grip. You can get uh, a full four fingers on it. Um, additionally, uh, this, bar this particular Barlow has a lockback. Um, not all Barlows come with lockbacks, but A.G. Russell put a lockback on his. It is pin constructed, as you can see. And the uh, handle scales that are not bolster steel are uh, Coco Bolo. And Coco Bolo is a nice material, but it is not as tough as G10. One of the things that's happened since I've started carrying this knife, I got this little nick in the bottom. That's okay. It doesn't really bother me. It doesn't affect performance. It doesn't bother me in the hand. It doesn't bother me when I'm using it. Uh, it'll just give the knife a little bit of character. I have to say that I'm uh, more than surprised with the performance of the 8CR 13MOV. Typically this is a steel that I don't like, but after using it I realized that all of the knives that I had were from Kershaw, and Kershaw tends to bead blast its knives instead of giving them a satin finish, especially on the lower priced models. And one of the things that bead blasting does is that it opens up the pores of the knife steel so that it, it allows rust and uh, moisture to get in there and create rust. And 8CR 13MOV is uh, roughly equivalent to like an OS8, but it doesn't have quite the chromium content that OS8 does or um, if it does, it for uh, other reasons, it tends to rust. So if you combine the rust enhancing factors of something like uh, a bead blast finish with the already um, less stain resistant uh, HCR 13 MOV formula, you're going to get something that will rust more readily. And if you look at the um, review of the Kershaw Injection 3.0, which ran HCR 13 MOV in a bead blast blade, you can see that there are pictures that I took uh, after using the knife in some uh, regular cutting chores and the knife actually had some staining on it, some coloration. It wasn't rust, but it was definitely coloration. Here, um, I decided that I was going to really put the 8CR 13MOV through its paces and so I did some uh, mild fire prep with it and um, I was able, and some cardboard cutting and I was able to take the edge off in about two days. I got it down to where it would not uh, do any real cutting and then I brought the edge back on my sharp maker and I did this twice and so I have a really good sense of how this steel is going to work and I have to say that you know with the satin finish it is a, a significantly better steel in the sense that it has not wanted to color or rust. I've done the same kind of food prep cutting grapes, cutting oranges, cutting apples that I did with the injection and as you can see this blade is still nice and quite shiny. Um, the uh, edge holding ability is, is not too bad either um, for the price of the knife and the price of the steel. It's quite good. This is a $44 knife from A.G. Russell, and the overall dimensions are really quite nice for EDC. Um, <clears throat> the knife closed comes in at a uh, 
The knife close comes in at around uh, three and a half inches. Uh, the blade is two point uh, is uh, two and seven eighths inches long, and then the whole knife, uh, because of the the steel bolster, it weighs almost three ounces, which is pretty surprising for a knife of this size. It does give a sense of heft in the pocket, so you know, like if you put your pants on, you'll know right away if you have a knife in there if it's if you're carrying the barlow. Um, I really like the the way this looks. This is one of my favorite. Um, traditional knife patterns. Uh, this will be the second traditional knife that I review and uh, I'm really impressed with the fit and finish and the design here. Um, this is a traditional knife and it looks like a traditional knife but it opens like a modern knife and that is really a cool feature. So this is my video overview of the AG Russell Barlow. Stay tuned to Everyday Commentary for the written review.